know, behind the scenes, you know, as far as like, like, okay, so we, we had worship, right? And, and, I, and I, I, I was blessed by it. Um, and there, I did have to come here and prepare and get the songs together and, and you know, pray and, and let the Lord lead and which songs and how we're going to do it and, and all that. And so there is like work to do about it. But it's it's a blessing, though. It's, it's a blessing to be able to to um, to serve God in this way. It's a blessing to be able to share the word uh, today. And um, today I'm going to be I'm going to be talking about having an open heart, right? And um, the plat Pastor Carl and Sister Norma um, are either going to come back next week or um, the following week. And, but whether you live the back next week, I'm still going to be ministering, um, just because I told Pastor, you know, that just so he wouldn't have to worry about traveling uh, and then having to prepare, um, that I would go ahead and minister. So the plan is, and I know God has changed my plans before, so don't quote me yet, but the plan is, today I'm going to preach on having an open heart, and then next week I'm going to preach on having a submissive heart, right? And, um, and so a few weeks back, um, I remember the Lord put in my heart during worship to, to come up here and to share about how, you know, we can enter into worship and there's like this surface level of worship that, that you know, we come and we enter into His presence. But then there's this deeper level, right, where, where, where He calls us to, he, he, he is in a deep place and we, he called, we have to respond from a deep place within us in order to respond to that. And so, as far as having a submissive heart, that's what that's referring to is, is is that heart that's submitted to God, right? It, it's you know because like there's you know because submission is what what that means. Submission means like submarine, like you know submerged. It means below, right? Under. And so when we're submitted, that means we're going below the surface. And right, so you technically submitted means to put yourself, place yourself below whatever you're submitting to, and, and we're referring to submitting to the Lord. And so, but at the same time, it's actually a deepness yeah. of our relationship with God. And of course, like I said, some of talk about next week. But today I want to talk about having an open heart, which, which is a kind of like the surface, right? And, and it's not to say that it's a surface, like it's not important, or like if it's not like a, a relevant thing, because uh, the open heart is pretty much the key to everything of God. I mean, the open heart is what opens up whatever God has for us. We cannot receive and enter into the things of God if our hearts are closed, right? If, if our hearts are, 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 are closed up, then we'll fail to receive. Um, and it, it even goes back to, um, to salvation, you know, it, it's in, in um, Romans 10.9. It says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And, like I think I've mentioned it before, but whenever I read the Word, whenever I'm, I'm thinking of the principles of God, I always, like, think of, of extreme examples. Like, just different circumstances. Like, how would this Word apply? And so... So like in this, I would see this and I would say about, you know, it says that you confess with your mouth, you believe in your heart, and I would think, well, what about a person who's not able to talk, right? What about a person who's, who's just, you know, mute, and they're not able to speak, so then how would they be able to apply this, this word? And so I, I think about those things, and I pray about those things to get understanding, and, and so that's where, where I see that the heart is the key. Now, the, 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 the speaking or confessing Christ, and you can confess Christ, other ways besides speaking. You can confess them with your actions, with the way you live, you know, with, with gestures. And so, as far as confessing Christ, you know, if literally a person was unable to, it doesn't exclude them from this, but the heart, though, the heart, you cannot exclude that. You cannot have a circumstance where a person does not have a heart, or is not able to, to have that belief in the heart in order to receive salvation from the Lord. Right? And so, even though the mouth is involved, and the confession is an important part of our walk, in other words, it's saying that if you don't have Christ, you're not going to confess Him, you're not going to talk about Him, you're not going to have anything to, to share about Christ. But if you have that belief in your heart, 
then you, you're saved and you have Christ, and then confession will come, right? And so, so the key is the heart, right? So even for the, the, the basics of, of, of the things of God, which is salvation, we need to have that, that heart. We have that open heart. Um, and, and also, if you go to um, Mark chapter 11... Mark chapter 11. In verse 23, it says, For assuredly I say to you, whosoever says to this mountain, mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things that he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Right? So anything that we approach God with, we have to have that, that open heart. We have to have that belief in our hearts without doubting. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a funny thing about the heart. Um, in the Bible, when you're reading about the heart, kind of it's, it's a hard thing to study because sometimes the heart is referring to um, the emotions. Sometimes the heart is referring to the, the spirit of man or, or, or the, the, the being of a person. Sometimes it's referring to the soul, or parts, you know, it, it involves the soul. And, and so, the, so when you're studying, a lot of times it talks about, a lot of times it involves the mind, right? But there's a difference between the heart, like the heart that believes, and there's a difference between the mind, right? Because the Bible says that when you pray, that you have to um, believe what you pray, and is that if you don't believe, or, or if you say one thing, you're praying one thing, but you're, you're acting a different way, it, it causes you double-minded, right? A person who, who, who prays one thing, and, and, but doesn't follow it in their actions, or, or, or is behaving in a different way, is a double-minded person. It's a person whose mind is divided, right? So our mind can be divided, according to the Word of God. We can, like, want something or think something, and then, sometimes, and then have doubts and have an opposing thought and a, an opposing mind. They're both our thoughts. They're both what we're thinking, but they're against each other, right? And that's, that, that's a normal thing. The Bible acknowledges that. But the heart, though, the heart cannot be divided. The heart is either hot or cold. It's one way or the other. The heart is, is, is a part of us that it's either in or it's out, right? And sometimes the mind can affect our heart, and, and, and the condition of our heart can be reflected through what we say. But in the end, the heart is the one that determines, you know, which, which direction we're going or, or where we're at, especially in the things of God. And so, so it's okay and it's normal to, to be, you know, uh, having opposing thoughts and dealing with things in your mind, right? Now, the Bible doesn't encourage that. The, 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 Bible, the Bible doesn't say that if you find yourself there to stay there, it encourages you to get out of that yeah. place. Yeah. But it does acknowledge that that's something that we deal with. We, we, we deal with, okay, should I do this? Should I go there? You know, what does this mean? You know, what happens to me if, I, if this happens? What does it mean? You know, what's, what's in it for my future? Or we think of all these different reasons why we want to go here, want to go there, want to do this, want to do that. The Bible, it encourages us to, to find where our heart is and to make our decisions based on that. Because the heart is not going to be divided. The heart is going to be, like I said, either on or off. And so the encouragement is to have your heart open to the Lord, right? Um, and that way the Lord will direct our hearts. Um, the Bible says specifically that, that God hardly even pays attention to all this outside stuff, right? It, that God, when He's dealing with us, He directly goes to the heart. He directly deals with our heart. Um, if, if, if you want, you can turn to uh, Samuel 16 or 2 up there. Samuel 16, verse 7. Samuel 16, 7. So God looks at the heart. Samuel 16, 7 says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Okay, and so let me just give background. Uh, um, those of you who are familiar with, with uh, the book of Samuel, you know what's going on here. But 
Um, so what's happening right now is Samuel is a prophet of God. He is, he is the person who spends time in God's presence, who hears God's voice, and is familiar with who God is and how God does things, right? He is a man of God, a prophet of God. And so God sends him out to find a, a king for his people. And so Samuel is, is looking for this king. He sends him to, to the house of Benjamin, and he starts to go through all of the sons of Benjamin, find, trying to find who is going to be the next king. And, and, and so... You know, Benjamin brings out his children and he showed and he's introducing them or, or showing them to Samuel and Samuel's looking at them and he's and based on looking at them, he's starting to make judgments. And he's starting to think, okay, well this must be the one that God is, is looking for, right? And, and and like I said, he's familiar with God. He knows how God is. He knows God's ways. But but he's making his own um, decisions or judgments based on what he's seen. And so in um, Verse 7, it says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Look not on his appearance, or at the height of his stature, for I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. For man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. And so God always looks to, to the heart. Um, if uh, we can go to uh, the book of Matthew, Chapter 5. The reason why I want to, and I'm not sure if I'm going to get too much into um, the reason why, but, but the reason why that I felt the Lord put it, the Lord put it in my heart several, several, maybe like a month ago, um, was that people are not paying attention to their heart. Like, people... Like, they'll watch what they eat. They'll, 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 you know, like, okay, I can't eat too much of this, I can't eat too much of that. They'll take care of their bodies, and they'll be very aware of what their bodies need or what their bodies don't need or when they're tired, when, you know, they need to rest, they need to drink more water, they need to eat, you know, whatever, exercise or whatever. And all those things are good, right? And, 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 and so we pay a lot of attention to our heart. We're very aware of our bodies and the condition of our body. And then also, you know, mentally, a lot of people, you know, want to educate themselves, want to learn certain things, you know, want, want to take care of what they're learning, what they, what they know, what they understand. Um, but people don't spend as much time taking care of their heart and realizing the importance of, of where, where the heart is. And so we'll, you know, watch whatever we, and, and this isn't definitely meant to be a condemnation, like, okay, don't watch these programs or don't watch these movies or don't, you know, do these things. It's not meant to do that, but it naturally does it when we realize, okay, when we start to pay attention, okay, what am I letting into my heart, right? And we, and we start to realize, okay, which, which TV shows am I watching? And which, which um, movies am I, am I going? And, and, and it's so easy to let our guard down when it comes to entertainment. I mean, it's just so easy. Like, just because something makes us laugh doesn't mean it's good for us, right? Just because something, like, is, 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 you know, it amuses us, we're amused by it, doesn't mean... It's going to edify our hearts. And a lot of times, and not all the time, but a lot of times, it's the exact opposite. You know, a lot of times, the thing that, that seems amusing, that seems funny, that seems, there's something in it, there's something behind it that is it's poison to our hearts. Right? And, and if we're not aware of our heart condition, if we're not thinking and being mindful, where is my heart, how is my heart right now, then we'll allow those things to come in. We'll allow those things to creep in. And, and, and just like we take care of our bodies, just like we take care of our, our minds and our educations, we need to, even more so, be mindful of our hearts and the condition of our hearts. And, um, but in Matthew chapter 5, uh, verse 17. So this is... Um, so Jesus is 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 uh, talking in Matthew chapter 5 and I'm going to kind of skip around a little bit but just to kind of make the point where 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 he's um, illustrating how God looks at the heart and, and this is so important I remember when I was uh, a youth pastor and, and I would minister to the youth and, and there was always like some you always had different questions and even now you know when I minister to people that to adults people ask questions like is it a sin to, and then whatever. Is it a sin to watch a rated R movie? Is it a sin to, you know, to say a bad word? 
Is it a, like they ask me like specific like is this a sin or is this not a sin? Is it a sin to be mad at my mom or is it a sin to you know to, to hate my brothers or whatever? Right? They they ask like these specific things and, and those questions are like when they ask that it kind of shows that they're missing where God is coming from when it comes to sin because yes sin does come out in our actions but it doesn't originate there. Like, sin is not what we do with our hands. Sin always comes back to the heart. It always comes back, you know, and so it's actually possible for one person to do, you know, a certain act, like, um, like, it, like say I, wanna, I want to uh, uh, feed somebody who's poor, and, and I see them, and, 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 I, and I see that, that they, there's a need that I can meet, and so I feed them because <coughs> that need is going to be met, that person is, is going to get fed, and I do it, you know, unto God, but to bless the person, without thinking about any benefit to me. Well, that's a good thing, right? It's a good thing, and, it, and it's, it's a blessing to do something like that. Now, a person could be doing the exact same thing, but they could be doing it because they want to feel good about themselves. Oh, it makes me feel good to, to give you know, to the poor. And, and so, in their heart, they might be thinking and feeling like they're doing a good thing. But if their motive is, I'm going to feel good, when that, if that person fails to thank them, or fails to take it, or, or reacts a certain way, then they are, their joy, their, their blessing is going to be gone. Because it, that's not a blessing, that's selfishness. So, to give for a selfish reason, well then that would be sin. Right? So the same act could be done by the exact same, you know, by two different people, but if the heart is in a different condition, then it becomes sin to that one, and it doesn't become sin to the other one. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know what I mean? And so, so yeah, so I, you know, I'm definitely not minimizing sin at all, or saying that, you know, radar movies, you know, like, going to a radar movie could be a sin. You know, even a PG-13 movie, any movie, it can even be a, 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 a G movie, it, but if it doesn't honor God, and God, you know, and you feel a conviction about going to see this particular movie, and you go against that, and you still go watch it, well, then it's a sin. You get, oh, rated R movie? Okay, if it's not, it's not rated R, well, then I can watch it, right? Because then it won't be a sin. But it's not that easy. God doesn't work that way. And it's really important that we understand that, because that's exactly how the church used to be when Jesus, when he came and, and, and he had to deal with the Pharisees and, and with the religious people. It was all about that. It was like, okay, this is, these are sins, and these are not sins. So as long as I do these things and I don't do those things, well, then I'm right with God, and then I deserve to go to heaven. But it's not like that. It's not about a list of things that we can or can't do. The Word of God was not meant to be that way. So in Matthew, Jesus is trying to, to, to make this point. In verse 17, chapter 5, verse 17, He says, Don't think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Okay? So, so, and then, so later on, He's going to explain what He means. But he's saying, I didn't come to say, don't follow the, the Ten Commandments or, or the Old Testament. I didn't say, don't do those things. I, I didn't come to destroy the law. But I came to fulfill the law. I came to bring you the reason why the law is there. That's what I came for. And then so, um, if, we, if we skip over um, to verse 21. It said, Jesus is still talking. And He says, you have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of judgment. But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in the danger of judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, will be in danger of the council. But whoever says, You fool, shall be in the danger of hellfire. And so he's making the point that you, you've heard it said, don't kill, right? Don't murder. But I say that if you hate in your heart, then you've already killed. Right? And so what he's saying is the sin is not over here. The sin is, is over here. Right? And so if, if you jump to verse 27, in verse 27 he says, You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. Verse 28, but I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Right? And so he's, he's like 
All, and and the, all the Ten Commandments are like that. You know, I mean, I say the Ten Commandments because those are the easy ones for us to, to be familiar with. Because there's a lot more than Ten Commandments, right? There's, there's hundreds um, of, of commandments in the, in the Old Testament. But, but if you look at the Ten Commandments, they all refer, I mean, they, you trace them back to the heart. You know, and, and that's what determines whether, okay, we're following them or we're not following them. Um, but they're not meant to be a, a list of things that we can do to be right with God. Um, that's why the Bible says that there are, the, all of the commandments are broken down into two commandments. Love the Lord God with all your heart and love, and love, um, your, love your brother, love one another. And, and those are the two commandments. If you obey those, then you'll follow all the commandments. And it's really important that they mention that those two are together. Because there's a lot of people who think that if they love God... And they have an open heart towards God, but they can have issues with their brothers, have issues with people, that they're okay. But like I said, the heart cannot be double-hearted. The heart is either, it's either open or it's closed. And if the Bible says, and we'll, we'll look at that right now, that if you have unforgiveness, if you have arguments, if you have disagreements, if you have issues with your brother, then your heart is in a bad condition. Regardless of you saying, oh, my heart is good with God. You know, I ask God to forgive me. You know, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm having love towards God. The condition of your heart is the condition of your heart. You can't have cold, you know, closed heart towards people and then say that you have an open heart towards God. Um, let me go into the scriptures that describe that. Um, Before we wife, I jumped ahead. I'm, I'm going to get to that. Um, let's go to John 14, 1. We'll go there quickly, and then I'll, and then I'll, I'll get to the, uh, the closed heart. Um, John 14, 1. This is really important. This, this is uh, something that, um, that we need to understand about, um, about the heart. John 14, John chapter 14, verse 1. And it's a real simple little statement that Jesus is saying. Um, and the context of the statement is, um, is, you know, Jesus is getting ready to go to the cross. He's getting ready to, to leave his disciples and, you know, to go through the whole the crucifixion. And, and to, you know, actually he just finished washing their feet. And he just finished, uh, you know, revealing that Judas was going to betray him. And then uh, Peter just finished telling them, you know, I'll never turn my back on you. And Jesus tells them, you know, you're going to deny me three times. Um, before the rooster crows, and, and, and so all that just happened, right? And then, so the disciples are kind of bummed, right? Because Jesus just said, you're all going to turn away from me, right? And so that's the context of what we're reading. And so in John uh, chapter 14, verse 1, Jesus says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. This is huge, that Jesus is telling the disciples this. You know what, let me, let me go to that because I want to read more. I just, just typed out that verse. But if we keep reading... So like in the beginning, God, you know, before this, Jesus is talking about going to the cross. He's talking about what he's going to go through. He's talking about, you know, what, what's going to happen to him, right? And then, and, then, and then he tells the disciples that they're going to turn from him. And they all get sad. And so he tells them, you know, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And then he says, in my Father's house are many mansions. If they were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, and, then, and where I go, you know the way, and the way you know. Right? And so Jesus is... is talking about going to the cross. As a result of going to the cross and what's going to happen to him, the disciples are going to leave him. But then he says, don't let your hearts be troubled. This is super important that Jesus says that. And then he goes back to say, well, you know, I'm going to go and prepare a place for you. And, and so Jesus is talking about the things that he's going to do. He's going to go to the cross. He's going to die. He's going to you know, shed his blood. He's going to resurrect. He's going to go up to heaven. He's going to be at the right hand of the Father. He's going to do all these things. But he doesn't say... I'm going to, to cause your heart to not be troubled. 
He didn't say, I'm going to get your heart and do this with it and do that with it. He, said, he, he points to the disciples and he tells them, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. He's saying, the condition of the heart is not something that I'm going to cause it to be this way or that way. I mean, the Bible does talk about, you know, people's, uh, about God hardening somebody's heart. If you read the Old Testament, it talks about, you know, that God hardened the heart of Pharaoh, right? But, but that's not what, it's not saying that, that you have no control over your heart. You know, like those people that say that well, the heart wants what the heart wants. You know, or, or like, like if they have no, no, no say so in it. Well, the Bible is saying here, if you didn't know, the Bible is saying that you have control of the condition of your heart. Like you have a say in that. It's not just like, oh, well, you know, whatever, this happened to me, or I went through this, or whatever, and so that's why my heart is the way it is. Like we don't have that excuse. The, the word says, let not your heart be troubled. It tells you, don't let your heart be troubled. Um, and just a real quick explanation. I remember talking to the youth uh, years back about that, that condition of the heart. You know, I think somebody asked me, you know, how, why does it say that, that, that God's going to harden the heart of Pharaoh? And I remember I did a, an experiment or I did an illustration, I mean, where I had a, 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 a uh, it was like a little porcelain heart, and then I had a candle. Uh, uh, I remember if I actually got a candle shaped like a heart. I tried to, but I had a candle and I had, and I had a, um, it was supposed to represent clay. And, and so you have, you have wax and you have clay. And, and you can apply heat, right? If you apply heat to wax, it becomes very soft. And, and you can do whatever you want with it, right? But if you have clay and you apply heat to it, it gets hard, right? And so, so the Word of God whether it comes through the Bible or whether God's speaking through prophecy, the Word of God, it, it, it's like the heat. And it's going to do something. The Bible says if the Word goes out, it's going to do something. Right? And, and it could do different things at different times. But if the heart condition is a heart that's soft or open towards God, then that heart is going to become malleable. It's going to become something that God could do something with. But if that heart is in a clay condition, then that heart is going to become hard. It's not because God decided, okay, I want to make this one soft. I want to make that one hard. You know, this is what I want from these hearts. God is that kind of a puppet master. But He applies His word, His truth. And then if our hearts are not ready for it, then it can cause our hearts to get hard. That's why there will be times where you'll, you'll minister to somebody and sometimes they'll receive it. Sometimes they'll hate you for it. And that's not... A, a unusual or something that God doesn't recognize. But so that's the whole thing behind God hardening somebody's heart. It's not that God decides, okay, whether they want to or not, I'm going to cause them to not receive my word. God wouldn't do that. God wants us to receive his word. But anyway, so God puts in us, in our, our responsibility, the condition of our heart. He says, don't let your heart be troubled. Right? Um, and then so, I'm going to go down to... Um, to what I was mentioning before, that a closed heart cannot receive from God, right? The closed heart, whether you say, like, and, and I've ministered to people, I remember I ministered to this person, it was the same person would come to me, and, and, and there was issues that they would have with relationships, and I remember I would always go back to forgiveness. I said, did you ask that person to forgive you? And they would, no, did you, did you ask for forgiveness? Yes, I asked for forgiveness. Okay, so what did the person say? Well, I didn't talk to the person, I, I asked God to forgive me. They will, you need to go and ask that person to forgive you. And there was always a, a no, they, they, they're they not going to forgive me. I know they're not going to forgive me. I'm not even going to try. Or if I go ask them, they're just going to fight with me or whatever. There's always a reason why they wouldn't ask the person for forgiveness. But to them, they received forgiveness because they had an issue. And they said, God, please forgive me for you know losing my temper for whatever I did. And to them, that was receiving forgiveness. That's what the Bible says. Um, in Mark chapter 11 Mark chapter 11 verse 25 I'm going to read 25 and 26 and so this is a closed heart cannot receive from God 
Verse 25 says, And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Right? And this scripture used to kind of... Um, I, I used to get stuck with it because I would read it and I would think it was saying God is going to withhold forgiveness if you fail to forgive somebody else. Right? Like, like, like I felt like it was, it was saying God was going to, like, he was kind of manipulating me into, like, forgiving them so that I can get forgiven from God. Right? And, and, and that's why it's important to understand that that the Word of God, it has to be, that the Holy Spirit has to guide you through the Word of God. You can, you can read something and you can kind of come up with all kinds of ideas and, and thoughts and opinions about God, and, and, but the Bible itself says of itself that it's spiritually discerned, right? The Holy Spirit has to come and reveal what the Word is trying to say, right? And, and so, going back to the Word and, and understanding about the heart, and more, more than anything, understanding the character of God, I mean, it, it, like, understanding the character of God, it doesn't make sense to say that God is going to, like, say, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to forgive you. If you, if you don't forgive, I'm not going to forgive you, right? Because that's kind of a petty, right? And God is not, is not like it. He's not a petty God. But what he's saying is, and I'll, I'll show you other scripture, is if you can't forgive, then your heart is closed. If you can't forgive your brother, then your, the condition of your heart is, is in a state where I can't forgive you. Like you can't receive my forgiveness because your heart is in a closed condition. And, and, I'll, and I'll show you in um, those. In 1 John. 1 John chapter 3. And, and it, like I really, I'm not. I don't like to like present the gospel in a legalistic way or in a way that makes it about rules and can't do this, can't do that. Um, but like I said, the Word of God, or, you know, it just does that when you when you realize it. And if we pay better attention to our heart and the condition of our heart, and you know, where like when we're saying something, where in my heart am I coming with what I'm saying? It would change the way we behave. I mean, it, it would change the things that we do that we do allow ourselves to do or don't allow ourselves to do or the conversations that we allow ourselves to be engaged in or the groups of people that we spend time around it would change that because we'd be mindful of my heart and is this going to be good for my heart man I really enjoy you know spending time with that person or they're really funny or they're really whatever but is this benefiting my heart and then and, and I'm not saying that we would have to like uh, you know befriend them and say oh I'm not going to befriend anymore because you know they're not good for my heart but we would be more careful we would be cautious. We would we would know when to draw the line. Okay, yeah, this conversation's over, or you know, when when I need to step away. And not that we have to be rude about it, but we just are mindful. Okay, good. You know, we have this friendship, but I don't want this person or or the, the, what they have in their heart to come in and start to creep into my own heart. Right, and we have to be mindful of this thing. The Bible says that that we can determine the condition of our heart. So um, in 1 John chapter 3, it says, By this we know love, because He, Jesus, laid down His life for us. We also ought to lay down our lives for our brethren. But whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? And, so the, and that's why the Bible says, like I said earlier, there's the two commandments, is to love God and to love others. Because that is the reflection of where your heart is. The way you treat, the way you are towards God and the way you are towards others. And so here it's saying, how could you have the love of God in you if you can't be loving towards your brother? If you can't be a giving, loving person, how could you have love towards God? It's saying you can't. If your condition of your heart is closed and unforgiving, then you will not be able to receive forgiveness from God. And I'm not saying that 
that you won't be saved if you have unforgiveness towards others. I'm not saying that, okay, you're going to go to hell. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying in order to grow in the things of God, in order to go from a condition of, I'm, you know, spiritually small or spiritually, you know, just in order to move on to a, a you know, further with God, we have to have a heart that is open to Him. Right? Um, and the way we can judge that is, how are we treating the people around us? Are we easily able to forgive or is it hard for us to forgive? Is it hard for us to say, oh, I forgive. I forget, yeah, that hurt me, that, you know, yes, it did, but, but I forgive you. If we understood what that does to our heart, we would be so much quicker to forgive. Not because they deserve it, but because we need to do that. Because of our heart. Amen. Um, so the way we treat others is one of the reflections of our heart. Another, another way that, that reflects our heart is the words that we speak. Uh, let's go to Matthew chapter 12. We're almost done. We've got a couple of scriptures. Matthew chapter 12. So our words reflect our heart. Matthew 12, 34. So Jesus is addressing the Pharisees, and so it starts with root of vipers, but I don't need to start with root of vipers. So I'm not calling you guys okay. root of vipers. Okay, I promise. And if I am, then please forgive me. If you don't, then your hearts. Closed hearts. Your hearts are closed. It says, root of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Verse 35, a good man out of good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account for account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. And so, I'm going to... When, in a little bit, we're going to pray a prayer asking God to come and examine our hearts. But the Bible also, it, it, it tells us, you don't have to turn there, but in, in um, 2 Corinthians 13, 5, it tells you, examine yourselves. It, the, the Bible instructs us to, to, to look inside of ourselves and to see what our condition is. It says, examine yourself to see if you are in the faith. Test yourself. Do you not know yourself that Jesus Christ is in you unless indeed you are disqualified? So the Bible does instruct us to examine ourselves. And so I would encourage us to do that, to examine ourselves, to see are we able to forgive others? You know, what, what is our attitude about forgiveness? You know, God might bring people into our minds that, okay, well, yeah, I can forgive all these, but there's that one person. See, that one person, it's not about that one person. It's not about that one person. It's not. It's about your heart. If your heart is a forgiving heart, then it doesn't matter what comes. Forgiveness will come out. But if there is an area of the heart that is either, I mean, it might be hurt that caused it, right? I'm not saying for you to feel guilty about it, but be aware of it. If there is a hardness of the heart, then we need to realize that we need healing. We need Christ to come. And like I said during the, the communion, you know, through His blood, through His broken flesh, we have healing. For that broken heart. Things might have been done to us. That offended us. That hurt us. And they might be real things. They're not things that we can, you know, just, oh, okay, easily dismiss. But if our heart is in a hard, you know, has a hard place because of that, we need to seek healing for that. A lot of times, though, I'll warn you, a lot of times when we find that, that that's a hard place and we can't forgive because it's hard and we ask God, God, help me. You know, heal me in this area. A lot of times he's going to say, well, the healing is exactly what you're not able to do. Once you forgive, then the healing will come. Amen. Right? So i got to warn you about that, but I would encourage you to, have, you know, to examine your heart. And if, and if that's true of you, 
than to ask God to bring healing and to rest restoration and be willing to do whatever He asks you to do. Um, so it says to examine ourselves. And so I, I want to um, I, I, I want to read uh, Psalm 139, and this is our, basically our closing prayer, right? It, it's a prayer to close this message, but it's also asking God to come and to do inventory on our hearts and to see what condition are we in, so that we so that our hearts can be in that place because God wants us to get to a certain place like God has something for us right he wants us to be there right but our hearts need to be in the right place to get there right and God's not withholding like he doesn't withhold forgiveness he's not trying to keep the blessings away from you but your heart needs to be right in order to receive that amen so we're gonna we're gonna pray um in Psalms 139. I'm going to read Psalms 139, 1 through 18, and then I'm going to jump to 23 and 24. And so this is, this, is, this is our closing prayer. So you can um, either read along, or you can close your eyes and, and just pray with me. Um, but, but, but we're going to ask God to do this psalm in our hearts. Amen? So, so let's pray. It says, O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down. You're acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O oh Lord, you know it altogether. You have hedged me behind and before, and you laid your hand upon me. And such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the other, uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me in thee. The darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. For you formed my inward parts, and you covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes, they saw my substance being yet unformed. And in your book, they all were written the days fashioned for me, when as yet they were none of them. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. And see if there is any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. And I thank you, Jesus, that you do this work. Lord, you don't condemn us. You don't, because we are your righteousness. And we are right before God. And I thank you for that. But there are areas, Lord God, that, that keep us from moving further with you, Lord. Those areas, Father, we, we open to you. We ask you to come and, and, and to have inventory in our hearts, Lord God. And help us to, to, to walk out that righteousness that we already are. Jesus, you did a great work on the cross. Lord, help us to honor that in our daily lives. Lord, we thank you that you do not condemn. You do not condemn us. The, the devil is the one who brings condemnation. But you bring encouragement, Lord. You bring conviction. You remind us that we are better than, than unforgiveness. That we are better than being closed hearted We are better than that, Lord God. Because we are in you. Father, help us to walk in that, Father. In all that we do. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And 